So in the week, I was listening to Elizabeth Oldfield's wonderful podcast, The Sacred, when she was talking to Paul Kingsnorth. And Elizabeth made this very striking observation that she felt part of the problem Christianity faces, certainly in countries like the UK, is that it has been administered a mild dose of Christianity that has had the effect of inoculating people against full strength Christianity. And it really set me thinking what full strength Christianity might be, particularly when compared to the mild dose that it's often taken to be. And then I went to church this morning and the gospel reading was from Luke's gospel and included sayings of Jesus to the disciples and a parable that I think hint at full strength Christianity. So here's the gospel that was read in church this morning from Luke chapter 17, verse five following. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who had just come in from ploughing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. Now this saying and then parable is like a double whammy challenge on what full strength Christianity might be. Increase our faith, say the apostles, which sounds like a very reasonable thing to request. And then Jesus says this extraordinary thing. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, uproot yourself and plant yourself in the sea and it would obey you. Now, I think this is one of those sayings where Jesus is clearly saying something that's impossible and he's using his sharp, even I think at times devastating wit to completely undermine what on this occasion has been requested. No doubt when thousands of Christians in churches this morning heard this, they thought, oh my goodness, how on earth can I ever have faith like that? But I think Jesus's point is quite the opposite. The apostles asking for this increase in faith is itself a sign that they haven't begun to understand what he is driving at. And so Jesus almost mocks the request, but so as to make them think again, to challenge them. It's this precipitative moment, the tropological moment that is so present, I think, in Jesus's ministry. Have you the eyes to see? Have you the ears to see here? No, so that I'll say this ridiculous thing to you, maybe to make you kind of chuckle, but think, what on earth are we asking? Have we even begun to understand what this is all about? And then, no doubt the editor of Luke's Gospel puts this strange parable after the strange response to the request for an increase in faith, telling the story of the owner of a slave who asks the slave to serve them first and then they can eat later at the table and without seeking any thanks for that Jesus then says to the apostles we must identify with that slave we are worthless slaves and this is you know hard saying um, particularly now um, you know slavery is accepted in the New Testament it's not, it's perhaps important to say it's not the industrial slavery that is the first kind of slavery that first comes to our mind now. 
when people are rooted from one continent, sent to another in order to work on mass plantations, um, used even more brutally than machinery, not caring if people die. Slavery in the ancient world was often a bit different from this, and the story shows that, because this is actually is a slave that's been quite well looked after. It's a slave that shares the food at the master's table, even if the master has to be served first. And so, of course, without wanting to become an apologist for slavery at all, nonetheless, there's a really powerful insight into the full strength Christianity that Jesus seems to have preached, which is that, like the slaves around him and the apostles at the time, we Christians, followers of him at least, are supposed to regard our lives as not just in the service of another person's like life, but having no life in order to live for the life of another. That is what it is to be a slave. That is what makes it so abhorrent now. And yet there's still a deep spiritual truth in this parable that the good news is that our lives are not our own. Now, the life that we might receive when we reckon ourselves to be like slaves, not owning our own lives, living the life of another. Of course, that's unpacked in other places. It is the full life of God that might become known to us if we regard ourselves as slaves. But to link back for now to this response to the apostles' request for an increase in faith, Jesus saying, come on, the mulberry tree, the completely ridiculous thing, it shows that Jesus is not preaching a kind of incremental gospel. You can become sort of more powerful in the Lord. Um, you can gradually increase how you participate in the life that's promised. He's cutting right through that, saying any kind of increase, any kind of gradualism in what I'm preaching, the gospel breaking through, is itself a mistake. You've begun in the wrong place, dear apostles, by asking for this increase. No, what I am saying to you is that your life is already completely not your own if you are in the kingdom of God. It belongs to another. Now that is the good news, but it's also very hard news. It's full strength Christianity that can easily not just sound, but deeply feel within oneself as unpalatable, unwanted, even frightening. Because who really, maybe particularly nowadays, can identify with the life of the slave who belongs to another and welcome that as good news?